solve large intractable problems. It's a new venture altogether. Your brain is a wild horse there. Because remember, writing is not a team sport. You are not selling horse carriages when there are cars. I want to be known only as a trusted advisor. More like a tourist. Play to Potential Podcast. So David, uh, uh, moving to a different theme as a, as a practicing coach, you know, one of the questions I often think about is uh, what's, in the, what's in the realm of change and what's hardwired in people, right? When, I, when, we, when we're trying to figure out what are the development areas that we need to focus on, uh, that's a question that often comes up and what's worth uh, really investing time and uh, making the effort how do you uh, how do you think about that? Uh, you talk about that in the book as well. How should we all think about what's hardwired and what's in the realm of change? Well, the distinction people often make is between personality and behavior. Mm-hmm. And sometimes people say, "Well, that's just my personality." And I say, "I'm not concerned about your personality." I think. So it's a long discussion, actually, what is personality? There's a lot of dispute about that. Hmm. I, I would say that that's pretty hard why. I think if I'm introverted versus extroverted, I can become more social, but where I get my energy is, it's pretty hard why. But what we're concerned about in organizations, what we're concerned about as leaders, and what we're concerned about in relationships is behavior. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's behavior that's that's a problem. So I could be an extrovert and I can have good social skills or I could be an extrovert and I could want to dominate the interaction all conversations. Not my extroversion. It's the behavioral form it takes. And I think we have a lot of control over our behavior if Hmm. we want it. Hmm. So I, when I deal with people, the thing which I watch for is how willingness are they to look, how willing are they to look at their behavior and maybe do something about it. If they, in essence, uh, are not at all willing. Uh, I say to myself, is this going to be worth the effort? And uh, it may not be. Hmm. So um, the, the the problem I see in, in the coaching I've done with executives is the problem has not been personality. It's been an unwillingness to learn. Hmm. And is that hardwired, do you think, that uh, to use uh, Carol Dweck's language, the growth mindset versus fixed mindset uh, and the willingness to learn and grow? To what extent uh, do you think that's hardwired versus something that we can work on? No, because what she says is that you can learn to have a growth mindset. Hmm. She's very clear that that is something that you can learn. Hmm. I think where it comes from is probably early socialization. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's probably easier for some than for others. But I think that one can have a growth mindset if you want it. Now, I remember once asking a therapist, um, no, I I didn't know that. That's not the story. Um, I heard this from a therapist that... uh, one time a patient asked her, uh, how do, how do, when am I cured? And the therapist said, when you stop wanting to learn. <laughs> and I don't think that's a cure. I think that's the end of therapy. Hmm. That's when therapy ends. So, um, is, is, the, is do you have a mindset of wanting to continue to learn? And it varies with areas. 
Now, there are some areas where I may not want to learn. So it's not a generalized statement, but there may be other areas in which I do want to learn. Hmm. And I think not being willing to learn is the one dimension that holds most people back in organizations and in relationships. 